Well, hello everybody. So we've got a new one. Uh, this is going to be the Nelson Pass DIY B1 YouTube preamp. Uh, this is the documentation you can download off uh, the Pass DIY website. There we have a circuit, power supply, the circuit, this is just one side. Um, the where's and why force. Some technical blurb on distortion. All very good. Self explanatory. There's a PCB. Component list bomb for the materials. Uh, there's a proviso here with um, the preamp from DIY Audio Store V1R0 uh, you have to put a little link bridge in here which I'll be showing you in this introduction da -da 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 -da. I won't bore you anymore with that uh, but that's the first thing you need to do is go on to Mr Pass's DIY website and download this documentation and print it off. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward build, uh, but there are a few little wrinkles that we'll I'll try to cover in this. Um, but this this is going to be a bit different. Um, I'm going to be using a full width case. Uh, it's my own case that I've had. I made these up many years ago, uh, and I'm getting to the end of them now. I haven't. I haven't got them, but uh, I haven't got many left. Um, but we'll run into that. So I'll just put that to one side, and I just happen to have a little box B1 YouTube. Uh, here is the YouTube itself. Uh, I've had this for quite some time. I won't take it out of the packet at the moment, uh, but there is the YouTube inside. And its designation is a 6P1. They are available from various places. Uh, you can buy them off of DIY Audio. I think I got these, I'm in the UK, so it was uh, easier for me to buy them from, I think this was from Radio Space RS Online. Uh, <coughs> and a bunch of components that should suffice to build it. Uh, I use predominantly, you may have noticed, um, these Wellian dials uh, which are very good, a quarter watt. But the, it's on the bill of materials, you don't have to use those dials, you can use any resistor, any good quality resistor. I'm going to say 1% but it doesn't have to be. There's some capacitors on various input output capacitors. These just happen to be, uh, if it will focus, there we go, Cermic 2's 50 volt 10 microfarad that I'm going to be using and some others as well along the way. Uh, I have Muse Fine Gold as well. I apologise for the noise outside, it's the local council cutting the grass verges. I've got a TDK volume knob, 50k, that I'll use. I've got some phono inputs and other components that I'll require. The lawnmower man's gone now. So <clears throat> this is the case. And why I say this is a little bit different in as much as I have a chassis in a sleeve and what I propose to do, uh, this is a plastic sleeve and this was originally used in a class D type amplifier to great effect. Um, you wouldn't normally use a plastic uh, sleeve for a normal amplifier it wouldn't take the heat in actual fact it's like a blanket it would, uh, wouldn't work but here's the different bit what I'm proposing to do is 
build up the B1 YouTube and with a power supply, the switch mode power supply, I use this LRS or RS7524 volt if it'll focus. There you go. That's what I use in this application as opposed to a brick type that you would have externally to the chassis of your preamp. And why I say it's different is because I'm going to build this first with one power supply and then when I, in another video I intend to build up, this is the Biamp V1R Passworks active crossover. Unfortunately, I, I built this up, it must have been a year ago, intending to use it. I've um, I already have one of these built up in a system, absolutely superb. And it is uh, tweakable, tunable to your speakers. I use these in a, in a act, active system with four amps, and I cross it at about 450, uh, which you can do on uh, the software that Mr. Bass provides you a link to. It takes a bit of tweaking to get the resistors and capacitors to sort it out, but you can get a very flat response. I'm using an open baffle trio type arrangement with two 15 inch base units and whatever full range driver I can implement at the moment. I've got a Tang band 1808 uh, which is very good and we have some gain here so if your amplifiers aren't exactly the same power uh, you can adjust these to to make it balanced and very very nice or equalized so that's for a future video uh, i'll have a separate power supply for this as i mentioned we've got a power supply for this and this is what we're going to build up first uh, this comes with the appropriate JFET and I think these uh, this has been sat in the drawer waiting to be built for quite some time now maybe 18 months just haven't got round to it but um, I'm, I mustn't say thanks to Covid but um, due to the, the current climate it gives me the time to work on these and build them up uh, these are these uh, I don't know whether we can see these. I think these are the 113s, the J113s, and not the Ks. I haven't actually looked. I'm going to look first. I don't know if we can see that. Probably not. I think these are the 113s. Uh, so you can see the two SKs, the Ks, Q1, will go in these slots and the Js, the J113s, will go in the J slots, Q1, Q2. So you have Q1 here, they go in this slot, this one here, and it's associated resistors which uh, here's four of them uh, go in R1 which are supplied with the JFETs. If you've got two SKs the Ks go in these slots Q1, K, Q1 and K, Q2. Same down here. My J113s will go in this, this slot here and its associated resistor will go in there. Uh, as mentioned in the build manual if you want to call it the build manual there's a little slip up where this link needs to be put in here a little bit of an error on the Gerber it's not a problem so what we're going to do is drop in a little link I can only wait for it to focus there we go. We're going to put a link from here to here. That's all it is. So 
that's going to be one of my first jobs is to do that and then start populating the board uh, which is boring 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 but well, I'll, I'll do a few components and we'll move on for that there's going to be two phono inputs um, and then four out uh, there are probably going to be more but initially as I say I'm only going to be using this as a preamp so I only want two in two out uh, but as I build this up and we install this, um, I'll need some more outputs, obviously, because the the input will be going to this, and the output of this new tube will be going on the input of this, and the outputs of this will be going here, and it will be a standalone preamp crossover, active crossover. So this is uh, quite a biggie, really, or um, a little bit fiddly. But we'll work through it. As I say, this is a repurposed case. The IEC is already in, fused up, and uh, we'll push on. So what I'm going to do initially in this introduction, all I'm going to do is just link this out, uh, and then we'll end that video, and we'll go on to the build video part one, uh, and start building it up. So I need some standoffs, uh, run-of-the-mill stuff really for DIY, but it'll give some people some idea. There's probably a lot of people who'd like to give it a go. Uh, it's a very good preamp indeed. Um, I've built most of the preamps. Now I have in the wings the Neur, uh, which is going to be coming along shortly, um, and apparently that's very good as well. But we'll be giving that a go at a later date in a further video for a, just to whet your appetites. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, first of all making the circuit correct as per instructions. So I've got a, a little resistor leg, a trim little piece. And what I'm going to do uh, to make this easy for myself, I use a little crocodile clip and I can just clip that little leg in situ just like that he says get on uh, and I'm just going to put some blobber solder the uh, crocodile clip stops the the little leg from moving about um, saying that it's not working very well uh, but there's one there's, and there's the other Let's do that again. Now we can remove the crocodile clip. I can leave that little piece on or I can trim it off. I'll see if I can trim it off. Now I could have... I, there you go. So now that's the, the little fix to the... to the circuit itself just like that and that was, that's good enough for me I think, yes not a problem uh, when we come to fit this capacitor I will have to flow and this resistor I shall have to flow the holes so that it misses what I've put in there but um, that just gives you an idea that's what needs to be done initially to get it to um, the proper specification. So thanks for now. This is just a short one. I wish you all well. This is Laverda, the implementer. And uh, we'll come back in part one.